Hello and welcome to Skeindo Knits. My name is Ellie and I am a Norwegian living and knitting in London and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry and everywhere else as Skeindo and I have a Ravelry shop for knitting patterns. They are like very Scandi inspired color work, mittens, garments and other things. Sometimes I just do something simple stock in it and sometimes something that's a little bit more vintage. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's what I do. But on this podcast, I mostly just sit and talk about knitting roughly about an hour, maybe once or twice a month at this rate. And yeah, and if you're a returning viewer, hello and welcome back. It's not normally what I do, I think that's what I do. It's been, it's been uh, maybe a month or something. I feel like I recorded last time, it was July and now it's just the beginning of August. So hello, how's your summer been? Uh, summers here have been surprisingly gentle for, uh, I guess what they normally are. Like London summers have been pretty notorious since I moved here. 13 years ago, they've been hot from pretty much April till October, including those months. Uh, talking like 30 degrees, with very few breaks. Yet somehow this summer has been kind of mild. Uh, mild in my turn. <laughs> uh, the way I understand it, it's more like around 20. So for the most part, I can't complain. It's been a couple of peaks here and there on my weather forecast that's been up to like 28 degrees, 30 degrees, 32 degrees. But they, those 32 degree days have like been standalone days, maybe two days, but generally it's not been too bad. Like I can deal with one 32 degree day because I can just close off the flat and it doesn't seem to exceed 26 within in here. And that's probably because these have been standalone days as opposed to the previous kind of several weeks going so not bad thank you London please just keep doing it that way instead of I swear some years it's been just constantly super super hot it with no breaks I was just looking at my weather forecast the same app that I use today where it's just like every day that I can see on the horizon on the app until it doesn't show any more days it's just been like 30 something 30 something 30 something and this year it's it's just been pretty good and yeah so it's been quite hot lately uh this early August, it has, I, I will say that. Why am I talking about that again? Well, it, d it does affect your knitting a little bit. Like I took my knitting with me to a knitting group the other day and my hands were just too sticky to want to knit anymore. So yeah, sometimes it does affect things, but most of the time I just close myself off in here, try to keep the temperature low by shutting off the south facing side using my thermal curtains. It's kind of working and I just sit here and knit and focus on one project at a time. I know, what a concept. I have been, since doing this podcast since 2016, been quite non-monogamous in my knitting, isn't that? I'm pretty sure that was the name of my first episode even, which... Uh, but yeah, I, I tend to dabble with a lot of projects at once. I still don't really have a good count of how many ongoing or unfinished, should we say, projects I have laying around. There's just a lot of project bags. I, I need to do a roundup of that again. Since I moved, I don't really have them all in one place anymore. It's not, it's not great. So that being said, somehow, Lately, I have been very, very single-minded, very monogamous in my knitting. I've just been doing one project at a time from start till finish. I uh, barely recognize myself. It's, this is quite new. And it means that I'm actually finishing things. So that's been well. I, you guys probably remember the project that I had in the last episode, which was pretty much just a jumper that I had started and finished. And that was all I had to say. I, I want to show it again though. Cause it's real nice. It's this beautiful crochet knitting masterpiece that I'm already letting gather dust. That's not good. Um, so this one, I need, it, I need to show it in more than one episode. Uh, but yeah, there's not really been weather to wear it, but you know, it's, it's a good one. Um, info, more info about it in the last episode. What have I been knitting on since, since last time then? Well, I've been keeping up with the sweater knitting practices. I have a, a very naive hope of getting through my stash, which will never happen in my lifetime, but we do try. And so I've been very excited to find a couple of projects that seem like it's just begging for some of my very specific sweater quantities of yarn. When I say sweater quantity, I just mean uh, a amount of yarn that I bought of the same yarn, same color, sort of, and would be enough for jumper for me. A little bit you know, a relative term because it will depend on your size, what a sweater quantity is, and it will depend on what kind of length you prefer, and obviously different meters slash yards for different weights. Like I, you need fewer length, meters yards for thicker yarn and more meters yards for thinner yarn and all these things will impact on things. I think a good sort of average is like maybe estimate half a kilo of yarn. 
uh, I need a bit less than that. I think probably most people, again, heavier yarn's gonna be heavier. That kind of goes with the thing. But yeah, my point was just that what is a sweater quantity will vary with so many things, including size. And I bought sweater quantities uh, having been in many different sizes. So sometimes I bought something that was a lot of yarn and sometimes not so much. And this was one of those that wasn't that much. Uh, at the time, probably would have been enough for a crop jumper that I tended to be doing at the time, but I've since just had a preference for looser jumpers. I like them long sleeve, I still prefer them cropped, but generally that amount of yarn that I bought back in 20... I think it was early 2018 at Vogue Knitting in New York, and that was a quantity that I was starting to struggle to use up, and I wish I just bought a skein or two more of yarn. And uh, this pattern which I will gush about in a minute, did recommend this amount of yarn. And I put a pin in that because uh, something happened there. But before we get to that, I just want to show the color a little bit. I knew I needed to knit this jumper, drum roll, uh, since it was announced on Instagram that it was coming out. And that is the Drevo Pullover by Teti Lutzak. <laughs> I have the pattern print out right here, so I'm not going to forget for a change. And it is just such a beautiful piece of knitting. It is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Te all of Tete's patterns, I am very sorry for pronouncing your wrong name, but that's what I do. <laughs> all of her patterns are so, so pretty. I, that is not uh, a word I'm just picking up from random. That, that is, they're, they're just so, so lovely. They're so beautiful. They're so, I think the word that she uses is like botanic. Yeah, they're very, yeah, botanic. Floral doesn't seem to be the, the, the fit, like botanic. It's very simple, minimal is the word. <laughs> I'm not very good at this. This is why this is a video podcast and not an audio one. <laughs> and they, they're just also pretty. And I feel like this is not going to be my last knit first. Uh, but this was definitely going to be my first because the Drevo pullover, it is stunning. I'm not going to hold up the pattern. I'm going to do a little, little picture thing here. I'm committing to it now. Editing me has to do it. Uh, it is, it's just so pretty. Obviously, I wish I could have done it in exactly that color because hello, burgundy. It's in the realm of burgundy. Uh, but I had this green yarn, it's a lovely green. I mean, everyone who sees this green are like, oh my God, that is the best green. And I'm like, yeah, this bottle green is everything. It's a little bit bluer than bottle green, I suppose. So let me, <laughs> it's been a minute since I actually was actively knitting on, knitting on it, which we'll get to in a minute. But I've had so much fun with this, first of all. So. Can you get a sense of the construction here? Because that is, of course, why I picked it, why I wanted to cast it on. I I just, okay, so you start off by casting on the neckline, top down. Nothing too unusual about that. Here you say, well, this is the neckline. This long kind of stretch here that runs from the back of the neck down along to the front. And you are knitting along, like, <laughs> does that make sense? So it feels like maybe you're knitting a, a wide neck that goes like this, but it actually goes like this. Am I, am I, this is English at all? I, I don't know. Oh, by the way, she's here. Of course she's here. Embla, people, people, Embla. She thinks I'm talking to her. <laughs> she is very cute. But you and knitting still don't mix, so you're just gonna be on the floor. You're gonna be, it's okay. Right. So you just start off by just doing a lot of rib. I have mostly stuck perfectly to this pattern, didn't want to modify anything. I really didn't know what was coming ahead even, although this is very well explained. There are lots of good illustrations, both schematic, uh, there's kind of like half schematic just to let you measure things as you're knitting it. And there is like a flat lay of the whole knit to show you all the different sections that you're doing. So you're very much, you know where you are at, but it didn't mean that I necessarily was confident in modifying anything when I was like, ah, I've never done anything like this before. Uh, that being said, the pattern does leave a lot of good little sort of hints at, as to where you can modify throughout and in the beginning. So it's helpful, like if you want to add length, if you want to maybe adjust how, how low the neckline's sitting, stuff like that. It's giving quite a bit of hints and, and tips for how to do that. So if you kind of, if you're either very confident at modifying something like this that you may never have done before, or if you've not done any of your previous stuff in this sort of, sort of shape construction, or you know, if this is your second one, that is really easy. There's a lot of really good hints as, as to how to modify. And modifying the length is the easiest of all because that is what you're finally having on your needle. So that isn't a thing I would worry about. If you have extra yarn, go forth, make it longer. So yeah, uh, first thing I hadn't quite expected, and, and the simple zoom into the photos would have had told me this, but I'm kind of glad I hadn't done that because then maybe I would have been discouraged because me and rib, 
not the best of friends because Raven involves a lot of purling and it's me and purling. So yeah, it's, this is the majority rib pattern. The most of this is rib. See the whole body here? Yeah, it's rib. It's also all rib. So this neckline that felt like it was taking forever is all rib. And I am so glad I stuck with it. I am really, really glad that I did. It is beautiful. It's gorgeous. And just, just look at this like cable pattern here. It's very subtle textured. It is, it is cabled. Uh, looking at it just makes me think of Doctor Who because I've been re-watching everything from the 2005 onwards. Um, yeah, so I hope, hopefully you can see that. I have to put this down because Emla can reach it now, so that's how that goes. So that's kind of, yeah, how, how it's going. You're knitting in the round, rib, 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 and you're getting to these kind of cable bits, and that was definitely a part I just had to push through. Uh, me and cables are not... <laughs> Sometimes I get into a groove of it and it's just very automatic and sometimes it really feels like a struggle because cables do require you to kind of, you know, sort of bend your stitches in, in a way, right? And me being quite a tight knitter, there's not a whole lot of wriggle room there. Really got to pull and stretch those stitches quite far on very, you know, relatively thick needles. Like the stitches and needles to me are quite one-to-one. -one. It's just like, it feels a little bit hard on the hand sometimes, but I, I really... I pushed through, I got there, uh, it was quite easy to, I wouldn't say memorize, like I had the chart in front of me the whole time, and this is all charted, the whole bit here, really, really nicely done. I lost my train of thought, but yeah, I, I got into it, is what I'm trying to say. It was very smooth sailing, and so by the time I felt like, you know what, I feel like it's enough cables now, I was done with the cables, and that felt like almost like a bit of a, a reward to get back to the ribbing again. So that was just doing ribbon that felt quite easy and you know something I could just keep on doing in the round in this very established increase pattern at this point and just keep on doing that. Even if I was sleeping, couldn't think otherwise, just made sure I had a good row count. That was the main thing. I guess one thing I will say if you are planning on knitting this, there is a, a very good tip in the pattern that if the increase method, which is sort of doing these yarn overs, one is reversed and one is the regular one on each side of these increase stitches here, can see that. If you're finding that they get too loose and you get a gap, uh, it's suggesting you might want to do a different one, like maybe make one left and right. I should have done that, but I only found out that I was getting that gap quite far down. And had I done some swatching or something, something I probably would have figured that out beforehand, but you know, here we are. So I just kept with the increases that I was using from the beginning, even though you can clearly see here there is a bit of a gap going through here. And I have tried to kind of adjust it a little bit and maybe make this central spine have more of that yarn in it than having it next to it in these gaps, if that makes sense. And I've been sort of relatively successful there. It doesn't look too bad. I, I really did have to stretch that out just to show you right now. So, but that's just a tip. If you are gonna knit this, you might wanna see if you can replace it with one left and right if you're getting these gaps, but this has been extensively test knitted. So I don't think that's gonna be a common thing. That was just a me thing. I'm showing you kind of details and whatever, but this is sort of how, how it's looking when it's actually looking like a jumper. So all of a sudden, and I, I, the construction here was just so brilliant because it's, yeah, it's very modular and you're knitting in a very strange sort of way where you're like, okay, so I both have the front and back and you feel like you're just doing a neckline or a yoke even for the longest time. And until suddenly you're just doing some shorter shaping on the side and, and now you're doing sleeves and you're like, oh, 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 this is like down to here. You've done a jumper. But you never really felt like you were doing that. You felt like you were just doing a yoke. And then, and I guess that's what a yoke is. I don't know. <laughs> I was just very pleasantly surprised to just find that I, I felt like it was going really slow. I was worried about running out of yarn. And then all of a sudden, there is this section here that you're, you're finally doing some just plain old stocking at. And it's short row shaped. So that you're making this kind of curve around here. You're doing that on each side. And suddenly you get to three needle bind off here. And the stitches you're left with, that's your sleeve. And uh, <laughs> so yeah, it was just very satisfying uh, for something that is, I don't know if modular is the right word, but it's certainly in sections. There was considerably less kind of stop and start sections than I maybe expected. You're really doing most of this quite continuously. There are very few points where you're breaking the yarn and continuing off and picking up stitches elsewhere. That is really only happening when you are about to start the, the sides here that eventually do lead to the stitches. So that kind of already feels like what you do in most jumpers. So yeah, 
uh, ingenious method. I've been just my brain's been very tickled by this. It's been very my my knitting brain's been stimulated. It's been very pleased with this with this whole ordeal. Um, I'm trying to kind of remember what it was like to sit here and knit with it because it has actually been a minute since I did. I have mostly been doing just the plain old rib and the round from the body down and that's what's going to determine the length. Uh, same with this leaves, uh, which I feel like are quite big, but I do love a big sleeve so I'm not really complaining. They're also knit quite densely because you're using a small needle for this. And this is where... This is where I'm having a problem because... You said it? You remember the pin we're putting in... We're taking the pin out. I don't have enough yarn. And I bought this yarn in America in 2018. A dye lot that was probably made in 2017. So what I have left is one. Oh, they're not even 50 gram balls, it's like 60 gram. It's here somewhere and I have this little nugget left. And that's supposed to be enough for these sleeves that are not done and for the body that is not done. And I don't know why I don't have enough yarn because according to the pattern, I should have had just enough. We got distracted by the post and Embla has definitely learned what the doorbell means. However, it doesn't mean what you think it means. It doesn't get a barking, territorial, anything like that. No, it makes it go, ooh, ooh, do I get the packaging, mama? <laughs> don't bite, don't bite, just be nice, be nice, yeah? So she gets very excited when the doorbell rings. She's like, packaging, packaging, and, and you will get the packaging, you will. I, I just, I can't open it right now because we're doing a podcast episode, you know, you know what I mean? I just wish you wouldn't bite now. <laughs> the state of my legs, like it, like I said, it's been quite hot and I've had to have my toes bare. And she loves toes and she loves legs and my legs are so scraped up. It, it, it's not good. It seems like the more I talk, the more she bites. So I might have to just throw it down the floor again. But Embla, people, people, Embla, off you go. Anyway, back to the yarn crisis here because I just, I just don't have enough. I don't know how to get hold of it right now. There's it just ordering stuff from America isn't as straightforward as you might think because there's a lot of import tax, stuff like that. It's it's easy to to get uh, a friend to ship stuff. So I am going to take a little perverse on Ravelry and if you have this in stash, you might get a message from me. <laughs> I'm just saying. I have got a few in mind that I might message and just ask if they're willing to part with it because their yarn is just enough and from the time that I bought this so maybe you know maybe so that's that's the plan there because this isn't even close to enough and I don't know if this is a thing of the pattern or the yarn or me so this, this is a, those are the three things it could be and it could be a combination of any of these uh, it could be that the pattern should have recommended more yarn per size however Again, like I said, this has been an extensively test knitted. It seems unlikely. It's been, a, I saw a lot of projects on Ravelry for this back when this was brand new, so seems unlikely. Uh, but could be, you, you never know. It could be that this yarn actually has less meters per, per ball. Yeah, a few yards per, per ball or, or skein, if you will. Um, and that's entirely possible again, because like small production yarns, farm yarns, stuff like that can often have uh, you know, there's a, a margin of error, whatever the term is, <laughs> where sometimes, you know, it's, I've had that before, uh, it just, you just have less yarn than you think. It could also be me. That's the most likely factor, to be honest, that maybe there's something that I've done that has made me use more yarn. Like, I have measured that my gauge is white, but maybe it is different, because measuring gauge in rib is, again, there's just more degrees of freedom here where it could have been different, and it's, it's possible. Could be all of these, I, I really don't know. To me though, rib uses so much yarn and the yarn required to make the size that I was making wasn't that, I, I thought it was surprisingly little. I, I will say that I think it probably should have more just cause like it's rib and it's long sleeve. It, that's that's my gut feeling. I don't, I don't know, these things just happen sometimes. And I do have another ball of yarn so I could probably finish these two sleeves and it's just the body length left. I don't know for sure. Maybe by some miracle I actually do have enough yarn. Um, I haven't finished yet but I just know how much I've used so far and how quickly one ball was knitting up. And another option would be to throw back the sleeve and decrease a lot more rapidly and using a bigger needle because then I can 
get a lot more length for with less yarn. I just don't know how much of a difference that will really make. And I would much rather follow this absolutely gorgeous pattern to a T. There's I, there's no notes here, there's nothing here I would change. So I'd hate to have to change it so because I don't have enough yarn. Like, no, no. I am enjoying this too much to be doing that. And I am just really, really thrilled with it. It's, it's gonna look, ugh. It's just such an impressive piece. It's such an impressive pattern. I love knitting stuff that is just super different from... I mean, I love knitting stuff that is like your run-of-the-mill yoke and raglan as well. Don't get me wrong. I just... This has just been so rewarding to do. That's the water. <laughs> or at least she's drinking water in case I was wondering. So yeah. Um, what else? I, I guess I haven't mentioned the yarn I'm using, actually. I forgot that. Uh, this is Green Mountain Spinnery in their yarn Music, which is sort of... DK leaning on sport weight, I think, or sport weight leaning on DK, I'm not entirely sure. It's one of those kind of in-between weights. Uh, absolutely perfect choice for this, I think. Uh, I've actually, I have contemplated doing these short sleeves. I think this could be quite a lovely short sleeve version, but I want long sleeve. I like long sleeve. I'm gonna wear a knit jumper. I want the sleeves long, like, come on. So I don't know, just, yeah, um, dealing with that, but yeah. You may actually recognize this yarn. Some of you long timers have been on it for a while. I was knitting a friend's pattern with this. My friend Mina of the Knitting Expat podcast was doing the York Will pullover and I offered to be a sort of, sort of test knitter. I did tell her I was probably not able to commit to anything in finishing, but you know, happy to knit it, chat about it on here, because it's such a beautiful design. And the only reason I frogged it is because my size personally increased and then the moths chewed out a big, chunk like right here in the front. And so I could mend it maybe, but I couldn't figure out how to mend it in the stitch pattern. And it's it's not exactly a tweedy yarn, but it's not, not tweedy either. So it's just a little bit hard to see and it was just like easier to rip it out and then just join the yarn again, spit splicing. It's because this is a non-superwash woolen spun. It's very easy to spit splice. Which, by the way, Embla loses it when I'm sitting here rubbing my hands like this. I don't know what it is, she just, she wants to be part of that. That's just the spit splicing. She's into that. I yeah. I I wish this would have become the Yorkville because it's a really really nice pattern that you guys should definitely check out. But I wasn't. I, di I didn't want to do it all over again when I had to rip it up because of the moth damage that happened. And I don't even know how that happened because this was an ongoing project that I had and I had put it all in a project bag and brought with me to my second vlog knitting. So I basically brought the yarn back to America again. Mm right uh, and then I just wasn't working on it so I end up sitting in the project bag and when it does that without having it in a plastic bag inside of that which is what I normally do these days moths might just find out and tell all their friends to go in there and, and there you have it so this is all super moth free now I put the yarn in the freezer back then the project's been in the freezer this is completely cleared and and beautiful my goodness this is a lot easier when she's in her bed wow Kind of want to restart, but a friend is coming over in like 15 minutes, so yeah, I better talk quickly because I have another project to show. This is, I haven't, I just knitted this non stop, no other projects in between, nothing like that. But when I ran out of yarn, I needed to take a breather and just not think about it for a bit because I was quite frustrated. I did really want to finish it, I was on a roll, but it was also getting really hot and I. I don't know. I don't know why I just felt the need to just cast on something else because I want to finish it. I just want to know that I have enough yarn. And then I was getting really bored because I didn't want to pick up this project because I didn't know what was going to happen. So I sat here. I just sat here and I wasn't knitting. I was just so bored. It was just, I was waiting for it to not be hot anymore. And I thought, you know, anything is more fun than just sitting here like this including knitting in thin charcoal gray yarn in stockinette flat back and forth me famously not a lover of purling and that's what i did and i got through it really quickly because yeah that turned out to be a lot more fun than just sitting here twiddling my thumbs and the pattern oh this is one of those things that i've been wanting to knit for a very long time i even bought yarn for this quite a while ago and it is the beautiful the lovely Stockbridge cardigan by Isolde Teague, the fingering weight version. Here it is, I'll do a proper photo. Now this cardigan was designed to use Tuki wool fingering weight yarn and Isolde happened to be selling that in her lovely online yarn shop. 
back when it existed, that was probably my favorite online yarn shop. It catered so much to my knitting needs. Had a lot of my favorite Norwegian yarns on there. And yeah, and Tukey wool, which is Finnish. And I had to get my mitts on a sweater quantity of Tukey wool, specifically enough yarn to make my size in the Stockbridge pattern because I knew I wanted to make that cardigan but it's been one of those things that's been in my queue forever because you know when do you really feel like casting on just plain stock in it knit stock in it net net knit <laughs> knit flat <laughs> well turns out you want to do that when it's super hot and there's not much else that you can do so I just been zooming through and zooming through and zooming through and all of a sudden I have knit all this completely flat I know who am I this is like some kind of identity crisis First I'm knitting monogamously, one project at a time, and then I knit flat? Like what? So I did this. First I was like, I'm just gonna do the rib because I, I just think rib's terrible. <laughs> I just wanna get it done. And uh, all of a sudden the rib was done. I may have missed some sleep or right, but you know. And then I was getting to the body. And by the time the body was done, and I did, <laughs> I have some hang ups about this. I did skip out on about one inch of it because I, I just like, for me, if it's like a set in sleeve silhouette or drop shoulder, I think 33 centimeters is like ideal length for me, me being a skirt and dress wearer. And so that was like the last 10 rounds. And I wish I had kind of had foresight for that because there, the waist wear is like in between the decreases from hip to waist and the increases from waist to bust is quite long. And I think I would have loved to take those 10 rounds rows out from there and taking them back up to up here where I ended up skipping and just kind of pushed the whole thing further up. It's just an inch. At the end of the day, I was just like, don't sit here and overthink it. Just skip that inch. It's not gonna matter that much. It's just an inch. And I think it'll be fine. I'm a bit worried that I will have raised the hip too high and stuff like that, but it's probably fine. So yeah, I, as I was then suddenly finding myself having finished the full length of the body, it was just really tempting to just carry on and knit the left front, which was where my yarn was attached. It wasn't really the next part in the pattern. The next part in the pattern is to do the back. But I was like, well, the yarn is attached to the left front. Well, just, just go and do the left front, which was a good idea. There's nothing wrong with it. You absolutely do that. There's no reason to do things in the order of the pattern. In fact, you may have realized I have already done the button bands, even though I haven't finished the sleeves. I jumped ahead. We'll get to that when we get to that. And yeah, I did the left front. And then at the very end of the left front, I decided to finally count my stitches. You know how a pattern is gonna have like stitch counts repeated throughout to encourage you to count your stitches so that you know you are in the right place and you've done the right thing in the previous bit? I, I don't, I should do that. I don't do that. <laughs> so, oh, it is windy outside. I don't know if you can hear that. So yeah, I didn't count my stitches until the very end and I was short of one stitch. And yes, maybe I shouldn't care about that, but I did. I cared a lot because I counted. I can sort of count. This is quite a marled yarn, but I did count like throughout trying to like see if I hold it against the window, I can sort of see the stitches and start counting them. And I found out that where the issue was, was at the very underarm where I bound off one stitch too many. It's supposed to be six stitches. I bound off seven for some reason. In my defense, I mean, again, I associate what I knit with what I've been watching while knitting and I was watching Dark, which is this German Netflix show that is so good. I need to watch it again so I can finally understand what happened because this just went straight over my head. Um, and maybe that's why I just messed up. I was paying attention to something else that was very confusing and very good. So I ripped it out. I was like, I will be so annoyed knowing that this is an error in there that I could have fixed. It, it doesn't take that long to, to knit just the left front, right? You're decreasing a lot here and suddenly you don't have that many stitches and you're taking out the neckline, even fewer stitches. You know, why not? Okay, so my friend got here a bit early, which is great because I'm blessed distracted. Hallelujah. So I'm just gonna awkwardly record uh, while they're out in the backyard, but that's fine because we used to live with each other, so I'm used to this. Anyway, I had to do the left front again, which was supposed to be quick. And yet I'm sitting here running out of the yarn that I wound around my ball of yarn a lot quicker and I'm not really understanding what happened there. So I suddenly started to decrease every other round instead of every round that I did the last time, which I was supposed to do. I should have done it again. So along here, supposed to be at the end of every row, at the beginning of every row. Suddenly I was just doing it, one of those. <laughs> so it was very getting very long before I was done decreasing. And I was suddenly having used up that yarn. I was like, I'm not sure that one missing stitch should have made that much difference. 
until I realized my mistake and I ripped it out again. So I had to do the letter front a third time. But I am pleased to say that the third was the last time. So we're all good. And I finished the left front, I finished the right front and, and then did the back. And it's been pretty smooth sailing. The, the little note, I think there is a little, a little error. I know this is very unhelpful for me to point out an error on here, like that's gonna help anything. But I just wanna point out that it's very easy for you as a knitter to just work around that. So when you're doing the right front, do a right side row before you do the wrong side. You're supposed to sew the wrong side, bind off, and then, you know, off you go. Just do a right side first, because then you will have the right row count. Because there is a part where you just kind of have a odd number stuck in that row, and you're supposed to end up... I don't remember if it was either on the wrong side or the right side, but it doesn't work out like that. Just, you, you end up on the opposite of the pattern set. So I had to skip out on a row, which made that right front one row less than the other front, which annoyed me. It's not going to matter. I just ripped out that row and just... It's fine. It's gonna be fine. But if you want to avoid that, you can just do a row before you do the everything else in the right front. Easy. I had, as you can imagine, I had a lot of ripping out of the left front, and I wasn't gonna do that with the right front as well. I, so as I finished the front and the back, it was just very easy to graft together the shoulders. Uh, it does tell you to bind off the shoulders and then graft, but I am a big fan of my three needle bind off, so I did that. It doesn't really make a huge difference. Uh, I just like it. And so from there, it was very easy to just just do the button bands. So I've done the button bands already. And once you've done the button bands, it's very easy to just do the neckline. So I've already done the neckline. So all of that is done. So I basically already have a fully functioning vest, but I have since done the shoulder caps. And I have so much to say about these shoulder caps. I've done one today, another one yesterday. So that basically all I have left to do is very simple sleeves in the round that I can bring with me anywhere that I can do now with my friend when we're watching Off and Black for the fourth time. It's such a good show. These shoulder caps are not your usual shoulder, ca shoulder caps. My goodness, why is that difficult to say now? <laughs> because they're not symmetrical. And now I'm not gonna have a go at all the shoulder caps out there that are symmetrical, mine are symmetrical. I think that's perfectly fine perfectly good enough but I do like this extra little touch to think about like how and it's doing the same thing with the shaping for the arm side front and back and they're also different and it's just such a nice little extra touch because we are shaped differently front and back and yeah it's knitting it doesn't really matter it's stretchy it's gonna be fine but it's nice it's, an, it's such a nice extra touch I've never seen anyone do this in a knitting pattern I'm not saying anyone hasn't but it's just like <sighs> It's not really gonna show, like you can see it's sort of leaning more this way. There is more space up here towards the back than the front. And then it sort of equalizes as you go further down here and, until you have, it, it is symmetrical again and you're just knitting the round you have. It, it, it works out. It's, it's one of those things, trust the pattern, just go for it, do it. It's not symmetrical. Just go back and forth and here you may be doing knit one and then do the short row. And here you may do knit two and then do the short row. And you just do that for a bit and it's, it just works out. It's just really nice. It's just, it's such a nice touch. I guess I'll find out when I start wearing it, just how it's gonna work out. So yeah, I, I guess I better wrap up this quickly, but I just really want to talk about the project that I'm actively knitting on right now because I'm just sitting here working on it. I think I didn't know, expect to have done this much before actually recording this episode. Uh, I was worried that I may actually sit here and have another completely finished garment that I only get to show off once. So I was like, I better record now. So yeah. Stockbridge by Isolde Teague, absolutely recommend. It's kind of like a, a very gold standard plain stockinette cardigan for me. I I have no notes, there's nothing here I would change. I love the shoulder width, I love the arm side depth. I think it's just, it's perfect, it's great. Um, yeah, like I said, no notes. Uh, I've been so spoiled with the, my most recent projects. Honestly, all of these are great and it's really nice to as a designer, also still be able to be just a knitter who's just get, gets to enjoy all the designer's work. I, I'm really, really pleased with that. So yeah, shout out to these designers and shout out to Tuki Wool, which is such a lovely yarn. Uh, I guess that's like the only gripe I have. <laughs> is this is a lot browner than I thought. I really wanted like a proper, proper gray. And, and this I think is one of the undyed Tuki Wools. I could be wrong, maybe it is dyed. Uh, and it's a lot more of a sheepy color. That is a big mosquito. I don't know if that just went across the camera. There's been a lot of mosquitoes around lately, yet somehow I have remained unstung. Unstung? Unbitten? But yeah, that about wraps up everything I have to say about knitting so far. I, I guess I had a whole hoo-ha about life and everything and Embla and stuff going on in London, but 
I've got to go and, and check on my friend as well. Uh, but hopefully, you know, we can just still catch up on Instagram. I'm kind of posting on there again now. And I will let this be my incentive to not let it go too long until the next time that I record this and we can talk about... To, to be fair, I have not been doing anything. Me and Emily are just sitting here. Just, it's been hot. I've had things to do and just, it's been a bit boring as well. It's, I had COVID. I had COVID, that happened. COVID's still happening. People are acting like it didn't, uh, it, that it's gone. It's not gone. And I have a lot to say about that. Just, just people stay safe. Remember social distancing is good. Ventilation, big fan of ventilation, but I'm good now. It was just kind of funny the way that Emla has been going through her six week quarantine because she's a puppy, she wasn't vaccinated yet. By the time the vaccine had kicked in, two weeks after she got it, I got COVID. <laughs> so that was like another week. Just had to sit here. So that was a bit frustrating. I think that's the only thing that happened. I guess that's why I don't have a whole lot to share and tell you about life and stuff in general. But like I said, I will let this be an incentive for me to not let it go too long until next time that I record. I, yeah, hope you're all doing well. Shout out to everyone who just are going through it, I guess. Or yeah, I uh, hope your knitting is treating you well. Don't forget to knit just because it's summer up here. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.